everybody, it's Mrs. Astor. We're reading There's a Boy in the Girl's Bathroom. Today we're going to read chapters 22 and 23. All week, Bradley worked on his list of topics to discuss with Carla. It's not homework, he kept telling himself. In fact, it's the opposite of homework, because if I think of some good topics, then we won't have to talk about homework. He didn't scribble during class. He listened closely to what Mrs. Ebel and the other kids said in order to get ideas for his list. He took it with him wherever he went. At recess, he kept his eyes and ears open, constantly on the lookout for a new topic. The other kids were meaner to him than they'd ever been before. They were no longer afraid of him. They called him names, and when he didn't do anything about it, they called him even more names. A fourth grade boy who wanted to show off to his friends ran up to him and said, You're not even human. You're a monster. You're a monster from outer space. The boy ran away, but Bradley didn't chase him. He added three new topics to his list. Humans, monsters, and outer space. Monday was Halloween. Most of the kids brought costumes, which they were allowed to put on at lunch. Brian, one of Jeff's friends, didn't bring a costume, a costume, so he borrowed a black magic marker from Mrs. Ebel and colored a circle around one eye. When he came back from lunch, he told everyone he was Bradley Chalkers. While everyone laughed, Bradley busily worked on his list. It covered both sides of three sheets of paper. I'm going to read you his list, which is 81 things. Number one trees that lose their leaves. Number two, gold stars. Number three, chalk. Number four, tape. Number five, are chickens really afraid? Number six, why people laugh. Number seven, what does it feel like to be shot in the leg? Number eight, pencils. Number nine, pencil sharpeners. Number 10, accidents. Number 11, coffee. Number 12, military school. Number 13, canes. Number 14, basketball. Number 15, friends. Number 16, enemies. Number 17, hopscotch. Number 18, dodgeball. Number 19, foursquare. Number 20, one potato. Number 21, two potato. Number 22, three potato. Number 23, four. Number 24, five potato. Number 25, six potato. Number 26, seven potato. Number 27, more. Number 28, less. Number 29, nothing at all. Number 30, what's it like to be in jail? Number 31, good boys. Number 32, bad boys. Number 33, breakfast. Number 34, lunch. Number 35, dinner. Number 36, have you ever been to the White House? Number 37, who shot my father? Number 38, why did he get away? Number 39, peanut butter and jelly. Number 40, gold stars. Number 41, black eyes. Number 42, fighting. Number 43, girls with big mouths. Number 44, what's it like inside a girl's bathroom? Number 45, saying hello. Number 46, reflexes. Number 47, hate. Number 48, when will I be able to grow a beard? Number 49, things that smell bad. Number 50, things you like about yourself. Number 51, things you don't like about yourself. Number 52, things nobody likes about yourself. Number 53, things you don't like about anybody else. Number 54, gold stars. Number 55, does my head look like a chili bowl? Number 56, closets. Number 57, hiding places. Number 58, dreaming. Number 59, bad dreams. Number 60, I wish I could fly. Number 61, kids with glasses. Number 62, glasses you drink from. Number 63, why people like some people and hate other people. Number 64, breaking things. Number 65, I wish I was invisible. Number 66, crybabies. Number 67, what happens to you when you grow old? Number 68, humans. Number 69, monsters. Number 70, outer space. Number 71, why is Halloween a holiday? Number 72, pirates. Number 73, princesses. Number 74, ghosts. Number 75, what happens when you die? Number 76, what if you were never born? Number 77, can you be some, can someone else be you? Number 78, can you be someone else? Number 79, if I was someone else, I wouldn't make fun of me. Number 80, magic, and number 81, markers. He didn't go trick-or-treating that evening, though Ronnie and Bartholomew did. The other animals gave him lots of candy. I'm making a list of topics to talk about with my counselor, he told them. Do you have any ideas? How about rabbits, suggested Ronnie. That's a good one, said Bradley. He added rabbits to his list. Bears, said Bartholomew. Oh, that's good, too. Claudia barged into the room. Bradley quickly shoved his list under the pillow on his bed. 
How about what dad is going to do when he finds out you're flunking, she asked. That's a good topic. What are you talking about, asked Bradley. The list. What list? Oh, I don't know, said Claudia. She slowly wandered toward the bed, then lunged for the pillow. Bradley dived for it too, but Claudia beat him to it. She held the list above her head and read it. As she looked at each new page, she cracked up laughing. What's so funny? he demanded. Your list. What's wrong with it? This isn't the kind of stuff you talk about with a counselor. How do you know? Chalk? asked Claudia. What can you say about chalk? A lot, he insisted. Claudia laughed. One potato, two potato? Your counselor is going to be mad when she sees this. Give it to me. Yes, she answered as if she had been asked a question. Yes, what? Yes, your head looks like a chili bowl, she laughed. Shut up. Who shot my father? read Claudia. How's she going to know that? Bradley shrugged. Claudia gave him back the list. You wrote gold stars three times, she said, shaking her head. Bradley grabbed it from her hand and looked at what he'd written. That's the stupidest list I've ever seen, said Claudia. Your counselor's not going to want to talk about anything on that list. You don't know her, he replied. She'll talk about anything I want to talk about. She listens to me. She likes me. No, she doesn't, scoffed, scoffed Claudia. That's just her job. She walked out of his room laughing. Bradley watched her go. Then he added two new topics to his list, sisters and jobs. Tears filled his eyes as he tried to think of another topic. He crossed off two of the gold stars, then crumpled the list into a ball and threw it into his trash basket. Chapter 23. Look out! Here comes the monster! Screamed a chubby fourth grade boy. It's the monster from outer space! Ah! It's so ugly! Yelled his skinny friend. Don't let it touch you! Warned a girl with pink glasses or you'll turn into a monster too! Bradley ran at them. They're, they scattered and regrouped like pigeons. He sat down to eat his lunch. Sure is a stupid monster, shouted a third grader. After lunch, Bradley sat at his desk, last seat, the last row. He didn't look at Jeff. He didn't look the other way either, at the chart full of gold stars, and he didn't look straight ahead at Mrs. Ebel. He didn't look anywhere. It was time to see Carla again. He took the hall pass from Mrs. Ebel and walked out of the classroom. He hated Carla. He didn't want to make the same mistake with her that he made with Jeff. He realized Claudia was right. Carla didn't like him. That was just her job. She was waiting for him outside her door. Hello, Bradley, she said as she held out her, out her hand. It's a pleasure to see you today. I appreciate your coming to see me. He walked past her and sat down at the round table. She sat across from him. She was wearing a long-sleeved white shirt with two triangles on it, one red and one blue. Did you make a list of topics to discuss, she asked. No, you're the teacher. So? So you're the one who's supposed to tell me what we should talk about, not me. That's your job. Well, let me think, said Carla. Are you sure you can't think of anything? He shook his head. Oh, I'm surprised. I thought you would have come up with a lot of interesting topics. Well, in that case, we'll have to talk about school. Shall we start with homework? Monsters from outer space, he replied. Hmm? Monsters from outer space, he repeated. You said I could pick the topic. I want to talk about monsters from outer space. Oh, oh what a wonderful topic, said Carla. The only way to kill them is with a ray gun, said Bradley. Regular guns or even hand grenades and atomic bombs won't kill them. You need a ray gun. He stood up and pretended to shoot a ray gun, making a noise that sounded like a cross between a machine gun and a horse. Carla put her hands up to protect herself. Don't shoot me, she said. You're a monster from outer space, he told her. No, I'm not. I'm a counselor. He stopped firing. Do you believe in monsters from outer space? She shook her head. No, but I do believe there are other types of creatures living in outer space. I just don't believe in monsters. I believe the Earth is just one small planet in a gigantic universe. I think there are billions of other planets with trillions of other kinds of creatures living on them. Some are real stupid and others smarter than you or me. Some are bigger than dinosaurs, others smaller than ants. But out of all those creatures, I don't think there's even one monster. Not even one? No, said Carla. I think everyone has good inside them. Everyone can feel happiness and sadness and loneliness. But sometimes people think someone's a monster, but that's only because they can't see the good that's inside them. And then a terrible thing happens. They kill them? No, even worse. They call him a monster. And other people start calling him a monster. And everyone treats him like a monster. And then after a while, he starts believing in himself. He, think he thinks he's a monster too. So he acts like one. 
but he still isn't a monster. He still has lots of good buried deep inside him. But what if he's really ugly? Asked Bradley. What if he has green skin and only one eye in the middle of his face and three arms and two hands on each arm, eight fingers on each hand? Carla laughed. You and I might think that's ugly, she said, but that's just because it's different from what we're used to seeing. On that planet, that might be considered beautiful. You may have just described a handsome movie star. Bradley laughed. On that planet, they probably would think I was ugly because I don't have green skin and I have two eyes. Bradley shook his head. No, they might think I was ugly, but not you. Why, Bradley, Carla said with astonishment, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Thank you. He blushed. He hadn't meant it the way it came out. I don't want to talk about monsters anymore, he mumbled. Okay, said Carla. I think we had a very good conversation, don't you? You picked an excellent topic. For the rest of the session, he colored. He took a green crayon out of Carla's large box of crayons and tried to draw the creature from outer space that he had described. He was able to draw the three arms and six hands, but he had trouble fitting eight fingers onto each hand. He looked up. Carla? Yes, Bradley. Can you see inside monsters, he asked. Can you see the good? Oh, that's all I see. He returned to his picture. He drew a black eye in the middle of the creature's face. He drew a red heart inside the creature's chest to show all the good that was there. Well, how does a monster stop being a monster, he asked. I mean, if everyone sees only a monster and they keep treating him like a monster, how does he stop being a monster? It isn't easy, Carla said. I think first he has to realize for himself that he isn't a monster. That, I think, is the first step. Until he knows he isn't a monster, how is anybody else supposed to know? Bradley finished coloring and showed his picture to Carla. He is a movie star on his planet, he said. Everyone loves him. Oh, he's very handsome, said Carla. You want it? asked Bradley. I mean, I don't want it anyway, so you can have it. I'd love it, said Carla. Thank you. In fact, I'm going to hang it up on my wall right now. Bradley watched her tack it up. He almost told her she wasn't allowed to put holes in the wall, but he changed his mind. It was time for him to get back to class. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week, said Carla. I hope you have another wonderful topic for us to discuss. He started to go, then stopped and turned around. Y yes, she asked. He put his hands on his hips and stared at her. Did you forget something? He stood and waited. Her eyes suddenly lit up. She held out her hand and said, I enjoyed your visit very much. Thank you for sharing so much with me. He stretched his mouth into a half smile, half frown, then hurried out of her office.